Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me for Lunch with Laura. I am Laura Lee Collet. I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator since 2004. So I'm coming up on 18 years, and believe me, I don't know it all. I try new things, try to um, do different techniques, and I just have a ball doing this. This is like my passion. I love it so much. So, let me show you. Right now, we have two new catalogs that came out in January. The January to June catalog will um, be available until the new annual catalog comes out. And the celebration catalog, which is only for two months, January and February, and then we'll have it again later in the year, two months at a time. So I am using a set from the Celebration catalog this time. Okay. In the Celebration catalog, now I have to find it, I closed my, my book. When you spend $100 in merchandise, you get to pick out of this catalog. If you spent $200, you could, I mean, $100, you could spend, uh, get two $50 items, or you could get this one. So if you spend over $100, this free set comes along with the designer series paper. And it uses really nice colors, and that's where I got the ideas for my cards. Um, basic Black, Fresh Frenzia, Granny Apple Green, Petal Pink, Pool Party, and Shaded Spruce. So let's see what the, um, the name of the stamp set is called Help Friendly Hello. And I just love this bold font they have with the uh, Hello Friend. And I used that in the first card that I made. The, um, I made a little banner just by clipping in the center and cutting those two. I used um, Versamark ink, sprinkled on the heat, the embossing powder, and I used my heat tool so that this is embossed. I'm not doing this card for you today, but I did want to point out that this particular paper coordinates with some of the stamps. And I cut just a little area that showed where the um, flowers were, and that's what I used to do this, this card. So, let me show you how this works. And I do need to get out my cleaning pad and my stampin' nest because I know I've got a, something that I need to uh, clean. So when these are the um, photopolymer stamps, so it is very easy to line these up and stamp them. So you just have to make sure you're going the right direction and you're going to ink up your stamp and stamp right over this. So let's see how that works. This is a beautiful pinkish purple color here. And I actually got the outline piece. No, I didn't. I got the right one. So let's see. We are going to aim it. I'm going to try to keep my head out of the way. Oops. Aim it right there. And I did get the outside piece. So, now I'm trying to remember how I did this. I did this a long time ago, but I had uh, colored in the stamped it 
and was thinking that I had colored it in. I may have used a different stamp set. So anyway, that's how that works. You can go back with your, your uh, blends and color this in if you want to. And that's how that works. Now, for the card we're doing today, I used several different things. I did some designer paper. I did some more card stock on top of it. And then if you can see right here, this is vellum. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. And then with a bow and a few sparkles, I thought it was too overwhelming and pretend like that isn't a boo-boo right there, okay? So I'm just gonna cover that up. Uh, there was too much going on in here to put in the sentiment. So I put it on the inside and it says, hello friend, hope you have the best birthday. So that's the way we're gonna do the card. The card stock I used was the Fresh Frenzia, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I'm going to use my bone folder to get a nice crisp edge. <clears throat> then I cut the next three pieces are all the same size. They, well, I lied about that. This, these are a quarter of a sheet of paper, so they are cut at four and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half. This is cut at four by five and a quarter so that you have you could have your border all the way around or you could do it cockeyed like I did on the on the card here. These two could be cut the same size. You're just going to need a quarter sheet. And then we're going to use some of the, let's see what they call this. I love to look at the descriptions. Open weave ribbon. So you can kind of see through it. It looks thicker on the edges and it really turns out nice. So, the uh, bird is stamped on three by three, so we'll do that. And then I'll uh, show you how to decorate your envelope with this cute little stripe. I thought that added a nice little bling to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is close this up and I'm gonna get out my Memento Tuxedo Black. This is my go-to. I love using this stamp pad versus stays, stays on. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna ink up our bird and I'm gonna Put him right in the middle. These stamps are so awesome because you can just look through it and make sure that everything is inked up well. Okay, let's see. I think I'll do him about like that. This really is a great stamp set. It stamps really well. I love it. All right, now I'm using some of the blends, of course, the Fresh Frenzia, light and dark for the flowers. I made out a little bluebird, since my website is called Stampin' at the Bird Nest. And then I have Mossy Meadow and Soft Suede for the rest of the tree. So let's color the flowers first. I'm going to use the uh, small end and go around the edge of the flowers. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Give a little depth to the flowers. I'm sure you're much better at doing this than I am. 
but I'm learning. And that was with the dark, so now I'm going to go in with the light, and I'm going to use the fat end. And sometimes it's easier to do the dark after, and I think I will pull it back out, and we'll do those flowers. Okay. The, um... Here's the dark again, just to kind of give a little shadow around the outside. So you can see a little depth there. And while I'm thinking about it, before I forget, I don't know if y'all are watching the Super Bowl this weekend, but I'm giving a shout out to Joe Burrow. We are LSU fans, unless we've got an LSU player play, playing in the pros. And he was our Heisman Trophy winner back in 2020 and led LSU to the national championships, beating Alabama. So, go Tigers and go Joe Burrow. He is playing with the Cleveland Browns against the Rams, and I know my sister and her husband are probably going to be rooting for the Rams since they're out at, um, in Los Angeles area. So, we just need to, to beat them and make it a great game. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with Pool Party, but I'm going to use the uh, lighter one to fill in, and then I, we'll go back with the, the dark and highlight. That seems to work better. And I'm going to use the smaller end. You do know that there's a lot, big fat line here for the large end, and a skinny line here for the skinny end. And I'm just going to put a few little things here, kind of go around the feathers, maybe give him a little shadow since he's sitting right here on this branch. Okay, now He's done, and I'm through with my blends, so I'm going to put them aside. Now, let me show you how to do this little uh, ribbon the way I did it. It's a little hard to do, so um, I'm going to explain it and show it to you the best I can. I cut 20 inches of ribbon. I've said this before. And I even proved it to myself a while ago. I had a much shorter piece, and it was frustrating me to death. Go ahead and use a little extra. And it keeps the frustration level down, and it makes it a whole lot easier. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle. And I, I'm afraid that the... Um, Let's try something. I was afraid that if I put the glue dot in the middle of the ribbon, it would show, but let me show you another little trick. The glue dots, you can make them into like a little tiny straight piece. I'm going to put that, let me find the center again, and that'll at least help hold it. And I'm going to put it on, oops, well, that one's gone. You don't want to drop them. Okay, I got it this time. And I'm going to put it just on one of the dark areas of the ribbon. Eh. Okay. And I'm going to put it right there, and that'll hold it. Then you're going to flip it over and come up this way. Now, I am going to use another glue dot to hold it. Because if you don't, it's not, like I said, it's not easy to do. 
Now here it doesn't matter if the glue dot shows. And another little, little one to tack this side down. And okay, good. I just went back to make sure that I was recording live because a week or so ago, I recorded the whole thing and realized that I hadn't started it on Facebook. So then I had to do it again. <clears throat> or I mean, I had to um, go back and fix it, upload it, and all that good stuff. Okay, now this one's a little off center, so I'm going to move it over just a little. So you want your um, ribbon to come up so that you can tie it right here. Now, you know I've told you I'm left-handed. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I always turn my cards around so that my, the legs of my bow don't go up in the air. They go down like they're supposed to. Now you've got enough ribbon here to play with it and get it the size you want. And I'm going to trim the little legs a little bit. See, you didn't save that much ribbon. So it's easier to, to do it the way I showed you. Get a good length so that you don't have a, a hissy fit while you're doing that. Okay, I'm going to set our little bird aside. And back on our card, I used an embossing folder that I'm going to show you that embossed the vellum and uh, both of them were cut out with the scalloped contours and I used the second largest in the set. So you have this great big one and then you've got four smaller ones as well as a little scallop there and flowers. To cut these out, I'm going to stack the vellum and the pool party and I'm going to cut it in one cut. So I have my cut and emboss machine right over here by me. I don't even need a piece of tape because I don't have anything I'm trying to center. Okay, so I'm going to run that through. And voila, look at that. What a pretty, pretty edge that shows. And then here's your vellum piece, both cut at the same time. Now, I want to give vellum some texture. So I'm going to run it through, if I can find my, uh, where I put my uh, embossing folder. It's the one that's in the new catalog, and it is called Gingham. Let's see, did I leave it? Nope. Okay, well, you know, some days are just like this. And if I don't find that, I'll just grab another one. It might be under here. Nope. Okay. We all shoot. I do not see it. All right, I'm going to grab another embossing folder that I have that will work just as well. Oh, here it is. It was hiding from me. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I am going... It's uh, called Gingham Embossing Folder. This is not one of the 3D folders. So I am going to put that down. The 3D are thicker, and you have to make a special sandwich to go through. And my rule of thumb is if you put something in and it's too tight to go through the you're having to really struggle to get it through. Your sandwich is too big. And if it goes through and it acts like it doesn't, 
nothing has happened, you need to add some another plate to it or a shim of some sort. Okay. So get that in the garbage. Put this back on my magnetic sheet and back in the sleeve. I've mentioned this before. These come from Stamp and Storage. And I have a, I'm an affiliate, so you can find the button to click on my website, Stampin' at the Bird Nest. And if you do place an order, please remember to put in the February host code, and it'll ask for it when you go to checkout. Okay, let's see how this turned out. Oh, look how I love that. Isn't that pretty? Can you see how? It really made it stand out. Now, the little dots along the scalloped edge kind of disappeared, but that's okay because I'm just going to, that it wouldn't have shown up with this um, particular die anyway, uh, embossing folder. All right, let's put our card together. I have my designer paper. And <clears throat> I'll show you that in just a minute. And I just felt kind of kooky today, so I'm putting it cockeyed. Okay. Now, because the bird is going to be on top of the vellum, I'm not too worried about where I'm putting my, come on, my stickle. Because with vellum, you have to be careful about what you use because sometimes it'll show through. And actually, this time, it doesn't look like it is. So that's good to know. So I'm going to put this down. And oh, my shirt I'm wearing says, baby, it's cold outside. But it's, it was started out cold, but this morning, I think it was 38, and it's going to be 70 today. So, we're back to spring. Now, here is our little bird, and I'm, I want him popped up. I love using dimensionals. So, I'm going to put one on each corner. You can even put one in the middle if you want. And then I'm going to center him. Maybe it's a her, I'm not sure. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Let's go over this way just a little bit. We'll just have this whole card different. Okay, so there is our card. I also wanted to use a couple of the iridescent rhinestones. These, as you can see, I didn't like them a bit. I've used all but six. So I'm just going to put, and they came in three different sizes. Oops, let's turn you over. And I'll put one. Uh, let's put one right here. And also, these came in the uh, January, June catalog, and so did these precious little brass, brushed brass butterflies. I think these are just adorable, and I'm just going to put this right over by the flower. Let's use a baby one. They come in two sizes. So we'll put one here. Oops. I didn't have the stick them down. Now, let me, um, I saw somewhere that um, some one of the demonstrators customer had bought the, uh, this take your pick tool. And they bought it 
strictly for this end and didn't really understand what the other things that it does. So as you saw, I flipped this around and it makes a little spatula that can also be used to pick things up. The end here has putty that comes out and if you twist it just a little, when it quits sticking, just peel that putty off crank out just a little. It seems to keep coming out after you stop, but that's what picks up all our embellishments. We also have a brush that attaches here for when you're die cutting intricate, delicate things. So this is a very handy tool. It's the take your pick tool, and I use it a lot. Okay, I think we are through with let's say the two cards like I said don't look at that I could have put it way over I guess and it would have covered it up so see there's usually a way to fix your mistakes now on the inside let's see you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna test and see how dark it comes out when I put my hallmark on the back because the other one had black ink and I might use this frenzy. Let's see what it looks like. And don't forget, all you kindergartners out there, sign your papers. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. I am going to use, and I, since these were in black and hadn't been cleaned yet, I need to clean that one and that one. I showed you the centering mat that I use that I actually invented myself. I'm sure other people have done stuff, but I was kind of proud of myself. When my uh, co-workers saw, my other demonstrator friends saw it, they said, I want one. So I ended up making some for them. Okay. I'm going to ink up the Hello Friend, and I'm going to put it right above right in the center, but above the center line since I have another sentiment that I'm going to put. Oh yeah, that is much better. This says, hope you have a very, have the best birthday. And I'm going to put it just a little bit below. Center it as best you can. It just gives you an, um, a point of reference. And I also put some, let me move this. Just added a few little leaves around. Okay. So the card is finished. I hope you like the way that that um, vellum comes out because I, I don't know why I've just never had thought about using that and it really came out great. Now, I'm going to close all this up and let me show you the, before we go, I wanted to show you the designer paper and it, like I, I named all the colors for you so you see you've got the flowers and the bird, then you've got a pool party sheet, black and black and pool party. This is the granny apple green. Aren't these beautiful? And of course, my favorite is the dots and all the different colors. I love that, and I love the stripe. I'm all about color, as you may or may not know. So. Um, it's hard for me to wear black on black when I go and work out. I'm the one that's always in the flowered get-ups. Okay, let me grab a sip of coffee. Now, I've shown you this before, but it just adds a little detail. I'm going to glue this right at the edge of the envelope flap. And I'm going to use my liquid glue. I'm going to 
I kind of go around the edge, but like I always tell my kindergarten kids, don't get too much because it squishes out when you press the pieces together. Okay, and I want to use this side. So I'm going to get right up here at the edge. One thing about using the liquid glue is, see how I'm kind of moving it around a bit to get it where I want it? You can't do that with the stamp and seal or the tape runners. Now, here are my little paper snips. And all I'm going to do is cut off the excess. And make little bites, little bites, little bites around the curve. Then you can go big on the straight parts. And then you get down to little bites, little bites, little bites, little bites. And there you have it. Now, doesn't that just set off your card. Just something that simple and that quick. So, I have shown you the uh, Friendly Hello set that's in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And be sure, if you don't have a catalog, you can go to my website and you can view it there. If you want one in your hot little hand, let me know. I'll be glad to send you one. And um, what they are, are starting to do, they being Stampin' Up!, is they're starting to add coordinating things in here. So we have the daffodil set, and they have the, with $50 purchase, you can get the Daffodil Afternoon DSP. And let's see. Okay, the same thing for the Sunshine and Rainbows. Rainbow Happiness Bundle comes with dies, the stamp set, and then with $50 purchase, you can get some coordinating uh, designer paper. So, sometimes it's a punch, sometimes it's something else. Oh, and let me show you. This is the most beautiful uh, set that is only offered to the host. So if you host a party, you'll get this. And I have seen some gorgeous cards made out of this. And it's a friend thing with I love being your friend, happy birthday, lovely you, you're in my thoughts. So it, it's kind of an antique little flower there, or that's what I think it is. But it's Calming Camellia. So um, I didn't get that because I didn't host a party. But if you want to host a party, let me know and we'll get you set up. Okay, I think that's all that I needed to tell you today. I'm going to flip back up so that I can tell you goodbye. And... I'm trying to see, is that, no, that's, yeah, that ought to be higher, shouldn't be in there. And, oh, this is my cord. Okay, I'm still new to using my Logitech camera with this program, so um, every now and then I have to, you know, look at it and see what you're seeing. So um, this is like when you see the announcers talking and the uh, microphone is hanging down. So I'll have to work on that for next week. So, but until then, thank you for being here. I enjoy doing lunch with Laura, and I hope you do too. So if you want to visit my website, it's stampinatthebirdnest.com. You can place orders there, and you can use the host code when you go to check out. And remember, it only takes $50, and you get something for free out of the celebration catalog. And we're into almost the midpoint. Well, no, we're three quarters of the way through celebration. There's only a little over two weeks left. So don't miss out. And that January, June catalog has awesome sets. 
keep watching because I'm going to be showing you some tricks and tips, okay? And until next week, love you. Come back and see me.